So in 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 this case, even if you come out losing a pawn or two, it doesn't necessarily matter what. So you've obviously you've seen sacrifices, right? You've seen players sacrifice pieces. Yep. 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 So what the what the scoreboard here says? So if he's plus two, that's great. That's fantastic. But what really matters is how many pieces are playing the game, right? So if you if you sacrifice a rook, but you've got a queen, a bishop, and a knight all bearing down on the king, yeah, you could sacrifice your piece, and he's up material on the scoreboard, but your pieces are where it matters. So even if you come out losing a pawn or two, if you rip this open, yeah, the scoreboard says he's still got these rooks this night. He, he's still got all this, but it's not playing the game. So what what you what you want to do is you want to push this and you want to start ripping this open, even at the cost of a couple of pawns, maybe at the cost of a piece, because when you see something like this, alarm bells should be going off that you're developed, all of your pieces are in the game, don't trade, rip this thing open and start an attack on the king. Huh, okay. So that's exactly what you want to do. So the move here is this. This is what you want to do. Now, I'm yeah. sure Stockfish is going to say, you know, something like this, or maybe even, you know, maybe even the H pawn. But this is fine. This move is is the one we're going to go with here. Huh. Nice. So how do you recapture that? Well, you've only got with one way. Bishop, so, yeah. yeah. But now you see this? Yep. So already he's having to start responding to what we're doing. So he's having to think about, you know, what what the you know he, he's he's on a, he's on the back foot so we're making moves and he's on the back foot here so what do you what do you do now uh i probably capture the pawn on c6 i mean i imagine you can fork his rook and the king there or no because then his um knight can capture never mind. yeah you take this he gets another piece in the game right yeah. right right maybe that's not the best move um maybe maybe pushing the knight up to is that not so great knight, knight to e knight to e5 here yeah then you can um recapture with your uh, dark squared bishop and then threaten his rook too so if you play this and he recaptures or he captures then you play here his rook gets out of trouble and now you've lost a knight uh, I so i probably yeah i probably wouldn't play that I probably wouldn't play that. Maybe, um, I mean, does it make sense to maybe move the rook on h1 over to e1? It does. That makes that makes great sense. So this guy's not playing. So getting him to start playing, that's perfectly fine. Because lining a rook up with the king is always a good idea, especially since our goal is to start ripping this thing open. Because... A, a rook lined up with the king creates tactical opportunities. So you could end up in a situation like if this guy were to move, if the rook's here, this guy moves. Now this is pinned, and maybe you you know you push like this takes, you know, and and maybe you maybe even take with the queen. I don't know, you know, but but it doesn't matter because this guy can't recapture because your rook's here. You, you see what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. So yeah, yeah. Rook over, rook rook over is a fine move. You want to be careful about this though. That's the only thing you've got to worry about here if you bring your rook over. Uh, so just be careful about that. It's fine because if he plays that, we could do this, and it's not the end of the world. But yeah, this this is probably what I would play too. I like it. Now, this pawn is pinned. You you see why? It's not it's not an absolute pin. You know, like if if you if your bishop was here, then it's in an absolute pin. But do you see why he can't move this this pawn? Um. Yeah, I imagine because you can just retake his bishop there. Yeah, there's nothing okay. defending the bishop. Yeah. So the bishop is, is undefended. So, all right. So what do we do here now? All of our pieces are playing. What do we do? Huh.
So if we pushed here, he actually could take. We recapture. Yeah, it looks like it's he good. has uh, three defenders on that square, so that wouldn't make sense. Which, which three? Oh, he's got the two pawns and the queen. Defending uh, d5. Well, this, this bishop actually defends two. Oh. So, but if we push and he takes and we recapture, how many defenders does he have? Uh, let's see. Well, I guess, do we, would we count his um, light square bishop? Yeah, the, the light square mm -hmm. bishop would count, yep. Yeah, yep. so I guess that would be... Four, if we count like the queen. So this pawn disappears, right? So push takes takes. So this pawn's gone, and this pawn's gone. Bishop's here. These two pawns don't exist. How many times is he looking at this square? How many times is he attacking it? Let's see. Four, four, right? One, two. And that's it. Oh. Because oh. remember, this pawn oh, that's is pinned by this rook. Right. Yeah. So, all right. So if we push, takes, 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 captures with the rook. We have in that, in that scenario exchanged a whole bunch of our attacking pieces. I don't, I don't really love that. I don't really love that. How come? Because we want we want to open an attack against the king, so we ideally we don't want to uh, exchange off the pieces. That alleviates the pressure from his position. So what we want to do is we want to start trying to find a way to open lines up to the king. So another way to approach this a little bit more directly might be to drop this back and just go straight in with this. Yeah, that's a potential. So, yeah, I think I think that I would probably play this and just open this rook up to look at this guy now. That's probably what I would do. I'm guessing he'll probably defend that pawn, but I guess we'll see what he, he does. He okay. may, but but now, again, this is pinned. So so he can't actually take here. He can't capture anything here. Uh -huh. But that you you he you do have an incredibly powerful threat here. Do you see what it is? Let's see. Hold on. Hold on, don't spoil it for me. I give up. Tell me. So if we take this and he recaptures, he loses the game. Because Bishop takes G6. Oh, wow. Does that make sense? Do you see, do you see why that's so strong? Oh, uh, let's see. Yeah, because he's forced to move his king. But he still has like one square to escape if we do that, right? So this guy disappears. This guy disappears. And he's in check. The queen is attacked two times and defended only by the king. The king cannot recapture for because of this battery. So oh, if wow. we take and he takes and we play check, this is defenseless. So if we capture here, he actually cannot recapture. He loses the game on the spot. Oh, wow. And this is, yeah. So this is this is absolutely the move. This is 100% the move. And he sees it. Oh, that's like some high-level stuff there. That's like beyond my comprehension at this point, <laughs> but good to know. Well, it's, yeah, I mean, it's not, that's, you know, it, it's, it's just... Uh, a discovered attack is, is what that is. That's, you know, it, it is a little bit higher level, maybe. 
Uh, but it's something you you should definitely stick in your into your repertoire, uh, you know, and try to uh, kind of re- you know remember. So yeah, the, how do um, we? The bishop move feels really unnatural because um, like if you go back a move there or two moves, yeah, the bishop move feels really unnatural to capture his pawn on a six because it has a defender there. So mm-hmm. I guess that's why that move like doesn't stand out right away. But it makes sense when you talk about it. Yeah, it's it's so your a check is the most forcing move in the game, which this is. He's he would be able to capture your bishop, which is true. But when you recapture, there's nobody left to to save the queen. Nice is the idea. I see. Oh, okay, okay. That makes sense. So so now how do we get rid of this guy? That's that's the next. That's the next thing. We don't we don't want to move this guy unless we have a check. So what about what about this? Remove the pawn threat. Well, if he takes, the same thing is true. Right. So, like I said, even even if you lose a pawn or two here, your attack is so strong that he that he. You know he's he's barely hanging on here, so I I would probably in this position I would probably play this and try to start yeah because if he if again if he takes he loses the game, so so now it's just operation rip this thing apart that's you know so you know maybe even you know here and maybe you you know I will I think this is the move this is this is absolutely the the way that I'm gonna play it. And we'll see how this goes. See how the story unfolds. So now what's the move? Uh, Bishop capture the pawn. Bishop takes G6. Check. And that's a wrap. And that's, that's the ball game. So, you know, now, I mean, this is hanging... But you know it doesn't matter anymore. You know you're you've got an overwhelming advantage. So now now it's time to find checkmate. So we're not worried anymore about this guy. He he could help himself to that. So now it's you know how do you find the 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 best checkmate? So let's look for checks. So you got this check, you got this check, you got this check, this check, and this check. So also, right also, away uh, the knight on. Five. Yep. So, or your oh yeah, and you got and you got yeah, and you have this check, which is which isn't a bad move because that immediately saves the knight and brings it into the attack. So you can rule out anything to this square immediately because he would capture and then you're in trouble. So nothing's going here. So of of the viable checks that you have, you've got this one, this one, and this one. This move here brings another piece directly into the fight. So th- and it saves it saves it. So this is a hundred percent the way I would I would play this. So do you un- you understand why? Yeah, because it forces him kind of towards his rook there because uh, the queen yeah. is defending uh, the e file. Yeah, we're gonna force him into the corner. We're gonna bring another piece in directly again because again. It matters what you have in play. This bishop's doing absolutely nothing. Nothing in the world. This knight, this rook, I mean, these are on the starting square. And and this guy actually is pinned because, well, no, it ain't because of that. So you, we do need to be careful, actually, because this is defended. But yeah, this saves the knight, and it, and it delivers check, brings another piece up next to the king. So this is the move. Yes. So he goes there. So how do we play it from here? What do you think? What are you thinking? Let's see. Okay, let's see. Let's think about this. Do good move some. <clears throat> Hold on, don't spoil it for me. 
It would be nice to get the queen on to f7 somehow. But. I mean, maybe you can go like queen c7 and then f7. And that would be checkmate. But I'm not quite sure what he would do after c7. Maybe there's something. Maybe moving the knight C to e6. C7 looks looks perfectly fine, actually. So, uh, because you're threatening to take this, which is undefended, and you're threatening checkmate. Uh, so that's not a bad move. This is also a, a reasonable move because, again, you're threatening checkmate. I would pl pr probably play it like this because I want to keep this pin. Is probably how I would I would do it. So because this guy can't go out and get on this diagonal or any kind of shenanigans, you know, whereas if you if you play here, this guy's pinned. If you play here, then he could, you know, maybe come up and block, or he comes down and maybe pins this, or, you know, who, who knows what he does. But with this, you know that he's not doing anything, and you're threatening checkmate in, in one. So, so you're basically pinning the bigger threat at the moment. Yeah, th this guy here, yeah. Yeah, I would, I would play here and, and, and go to, to do this. He could maybe try to step up and then when you play check he comes here that that might be a thing but do you see the the winning idea here in that position yeah you could move your knight onto like e6 and then deliver him check um yep and then the yep. bishop is also protecting h6 as well yeah literally any move at that point is is winning yeah, yeah. so you know you play here he goes here you play check he comes here, you know, check. And then he's, you know, then he's on the run. So yeah, it's yeah, this this is probably how I would approach it right here. Or actually, I'll tell you what, this move actually keeps him from being able to do that. So no, I think your move actually might be the better move here. Oh wow. Because if we play here, he can run. If we play here, he can't. Yeah. But he but he has this. Man, no, I don't, because we would take. Yeah, yeah, I think this is the move. This, I think, actually is. Yeah, let's play it this way. Let's play it this way. Now we're threatening mate and one. Does that stop mate and one? No, because he can still run to h8, even if we were to move on f6. He can, yeah, he can run, yep. So we go here. He goes here. We can put our knight. Well, your queen's already going to be on f7. Oh, so. right, right, right. Obvious, right. Of course. Yeah. So, but check. He goes here, and then what's your next move? Uh, you can re you can probably take the his dark square bishop there. Right. Check. And I think that would be game. That's ball game. Yeah. Yep. So he stopped. Yeah. So now if it went from mate and one to mate and a couple. So he has that's forced. And just double check that we're not crazy. Check. He can't capture. Nope. He can't block. Nope. He can't run. Yeah. So that's the game. Hmm. That's it. Oh, make it look so easy. That's it. <laughs> well, you know, it, it, it's, it's, you know, Paying attention to those little tactical details, like this battery, that's that's what that's what won the game, is this battery, you know, because once we, you know, once we sacrificed the bishop, the queen was done. Knowing that that you've got this pin here, the rook pins this pawn, and knowing that he can't take anything, you know, those little details are really important. But you know, it's it's you know, so let's see how do we play. Ninety-one percent. Oh, wow. so that's that's pretty good. That's great. So you basically See, this just, is and again, you had like a climbing advantage, like the whole entire game. That's cool. Yeah, we just the whole game. You're just and and yeah. that's the thing about the London. Your knights. You have seen though how your knights were in here. This is what I was saying before. This is their natural squares. You're controlling the center. This knight was able to hop immediately right into here into the attack. It it helped on the checkmate. So that's the reason that you you know. You'd like your knights to be here, 
you know, you want to control the center and they're able to hop right into the fight, you know. So, but you see, this is all, this is all book moves. It didn't matter what he played. What he played is irrelevant. I'm not taking the, into account really anything that he's got going on here. Nothing. And this is all, see, best move. Yeah, this is all, this is all just perfectly fine. You know, everything is, is great here. Uh, you rook over, bishop back. Eh, they didn't like that. Best move. I mean, you know, mm. but 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 that's what I'm saying. Look at all these book moves, and you don't you don't have to take into account. You know, you should take into account what they're doing, but you don't have to calculate every move. Like, is this safe? Is this a good move? You just get the pieces where where they're this this is where they go. You know, the bishop goes here. The knight goes here, this knight goes here, this bishop goes here, and that's just it. That's just where it goes. That's the place that it goes, and you can just, you're done. Get your pieces yeah, there, cool. and they're happy. Yeah. Yeah, I'll have to try so, that. I'll have to try that in my next game. I might have to take the cow yeah. behind the barn and shoot it after this. <laughs> so do you have time for one more with black, or is that is that all the time you've got? Um, Let's see. Yeah, I could probably do another quick one, yeah. All right, so let's we'll do new game, same guy, and we'll do black. All right, so e4. So what would you play here? So we want to do what is it? Well, do you have to flip it since the queen's on the other side? Like if you're playing the London system, or would you just go d5 the pawn? You you can kind of play the London as black. It's not like as effective because you're kind of a tempo behind, but you can do that. Yeah. So if, if that's fine, let's do it. Let's play it. Yeah. Okay. So the Bishop goes here, right? Gotcha. Outside the pawn chain. Okay. Yep. Just go ahead and get him out. So is he making a threat? Is this defended? Yeah, so our pawn's threatened there. So would you move, uh, what is it, the e-pawn there? Oh, you're protecting well, the queen, sure. Yep, you're protecting. So that's that's not a big deal. But, you know, you, you've got two choices here. You could do either one of these two. Either one's fine. I, I say probably at this level, let's just go ahead and make sure everything is solid. Let's just make sure that everything is, is nice and solid. All right, so what, what what's he doing here? Oh, he's just trying to get his rook out. Is that a good move or a bad move? What do you think? Uh, it seems pretty early for that move. Terrible. That's a terrible move. Yeah. So if so, the thing is, and I, I always say this, if your opponent starts doing crazy stuff, don't also do crazy stuff. So if he's going to do this and, and you know get his rook out and, and attack absolutely nothing, more power to you. But we should continue with with what we know we need to be doing, which is we need to get our knights out. Well, actually, this knight we would play here. So here, here, and here. This move doesn't stop us. It doesn't create a threat. So we should we should develop. So let's go ahead and get our knight in the game. So is he creating a threat here? Um, a huge threat. I mean, at the moment he's only. Pointing at the C pawn. There actually is a pretty significant threat here. I'm missing. It's you may not have seen this yet, but the move that he wants to play is this. So if we if we if we play bishop here, now we're cooked. So oh, sure. we need to deal we need to deal with this. So what do you think the best way to deal with that is? Um Maybe putting pushing the a pawn up to uh, a six to block him there from jumping to that square. So you don't really want to. You want to. You want to. You want to develop and fight for the center. So, in when you play the London, which is kind of what we're playing, this is the move you want to play. So we want to play this move anyway. So you've got two options here. It's this or this. Either one of these two moves. Is perfectly reasonable. Now, in in this position, you you don't mind to double your pawns because it supports this pawn push later. You see, so this move here, 
is perfectly acceptable. So you could do this or you could do this. I'll leave it up to you, whichever one you'd rather play. I guess to me, the pawn push seems more natural. It seems like really early to just trade off bishops. But uh, yeah, I guess if I was playing, I'd probably just push the C pawn. But that's just me. Okay. So the, the one drawback to this is if we do push this and our knight goes here, we take away later the possibility for us to challenge the bishop on the file. Now, I, we, can't, we can't go ahead and do this, but if we play here and we take, we damage his structure, and we would get, if he takes us, we get another pawn in the center to later push this pawn here. So I would do this, but let's, we'll go ahead and we'll play this. How come you That's a little bit high level. How come you wouldn't mm -hmm. recapture um, his bishop with the queen in that case? Is it just because you want to develop the bishop? I So I, I want to play this because if he takes and I take, then I get this extra pawn to challenge his center. That's the reason I want to play it that way. Interesting. So so what's what do we got going on here? What's he, what's he doing? Well, he has two attackers on our D pawn. Mm -hmm. Let's see. So, so let's say that we get out of his way. What, what do you think he wants to do here? Let's see. Not quite sure, actually. Takes, takes, and now that's back on the that's back on the menu. Uh -huh. So. That's what he's wanting to do. So you, 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 we definitely cannot allow this to move because we're in trouble if it does. But there's a problem with this move. Do you see what it is? Well, he opened his king uh, file up, right? He yeah, he did. But e four, e four on its own isn't a bad move. It's perfectly fine to play e four. But in this particular situation, it doesn't work. So how many times is this defended? Let's count the defenders. By him. So he's 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 yeah, he's defending this 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 pawn with the knight. That's this ain't defending, this ain't defending. That's it. You're attacking Three. that guy. Three times. So can you take this? Uh, yeah, probably. Well, would you take it with the pawn or with the knight? You don't want to break your structure apart I see. because then he that get that gives him something to, to attack. You don't want to you you want to keep your structure as intact as you can. That's 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 really something you know that you you know at at you know at 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 eight at eight hundred seven fifty you know it's probably not as important, but that's something that you really want to understand is. You know, you want your structure, your pawn structure to remain as intact as you can keep it. Because when you get into an end game and your pawns are all busted up and they're doubled and tripled and just scattered all over, the, it's really hard to defend them. But if your pawn structure is all still together at the end of the game, then these guys all support each other as they roll down the board. So here, I would take like this. With because if he recaptures, then you could just slide in with the bishop. Yeah. And you're because here, if you take and he recaptures, now your knight's just awkward and it's stupid. You know, whereas if you take this way, you're creating another threat. If he takes, then you create another threat for yourself here. Right. And your bishop's on a really good, really good square. So yeah, here. Yeah, here I would take like this. And his his only threat in the position is was that fork. And that gets rid of it. So it's gone now. So now recapture with the bishop. You're looking at his rook. Okay. So what 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 do you do now? I'd have to imagine. Um, well, I'm trying to think if it makes more sense to take with the queen or with the rook there. I imagine with the queen. Uh, or maybe push nah, the pawn you're... up. You're looking at the wrong part of the board. Oh, just take his rook. Take his rook. Yeah, the rook is worth more than the knight. So he took a knight, but he lost himself a rook. 
All right. And now, just come home, right? Move it right back where it was. Yeah, I should put them back, at the, bring them back home. Yeah. So we come out of that up, uh, up an exchange. Great <clears throat> right there. So what? Yeah, it's worked out well for us. So now, what do you think? Probably mush, moving the bishop to e6. Our dark square bishop. We can castle. That's not. Yeah, that's not a bad move it, because if you if you go here. He recaptures, and you can take with the queen. That's not bad, but you have something better here. Better, let's see. How could you develop that bishop with uh, with tempo? Let's think can you this. make a threat oh, of your own? Yeah, so we have a check and a free pawn before. Yeah, yeah. There you go. He just gave us a free lunch there. Oh. That's not good. That's not good. So now the now the king's on the run. So what do you think we should do now? Let's see. I think. I think so. We don't have like any check opportunities. Uh, maybe. In castling. Seems like it would make sense, and he's not really threatening anything, so maybe castling. That's beautiful. That's I really like that you yes, because he's already made the, the, the decision to weaken his position. His position already sucks. Don't don't also go crazy when they go crazy. He's played a, a move that's just that's bad, but let's solidify our advantage. Let's take just one turn and make sure that we are safe. And now we could start thinking about going crazy. So why did he play uh, his queen there? Let's see. <clears throat> He's creating a couple sure. threats. That's a good question. Yeah, honestly, I don't know off the top of my head. So when this queen was here, this pawn was undefended if it pushed. Now that the queen's here, he could play this and push our bishop out of here. So that's the re reason that he played this move. But it also sets up now the bishop to come down and, and attack our queen. So he's created a couple of threats. So so how could we, what could we play here to, uh, to, to, to spoil all the fun for our buddy here? Um, let's see. I mean, I guess... No, that. Be... Uh, I was thinking, oh, maybe bishop to e7, dark square bishop. So in case he tries e... to threaten the queen. Um, yeah, but you're 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 attacking here, right? You're 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 just kind of crisscrossing everything. So you really don't want to leave. You want to make it uncomfortable for him. So how could you how could you stop this pawn from coming here? What what could you play to to make it that move not work anymore? Hmm. I guess I mean we could throw our light square bishop into it, but then we're losing the bishop. Mm -hmm. Yep. Uh, maybe we can move the queen to a five. So then, if he does push his pawn, we can take with our bishop, his queen. Capture our queen. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's yeah. that's all. That's all very true. That's 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 yeah. That I actually looked at this too, because that is no longer a threat, and this is also no longer a threat. There, I think though that there may be a better move here, and I'm thinking maybe play bishop to here. Because if our bishop's on that square, he can't push this pawn, and it creates a threat. Uh, yeah, I didn't think about that. So, one. so the problem with that move is that he could play he could play his 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 uh, rook to here. We would play this, but the bishop comes back, takes, 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 and he's happy here. So, what about? I um... think. What about if you uh, like were to move the queen 
to f6. Just so on the next move, you can get rid of his uh, pawn in the middle there. Sort of blocking a lot of what we want to do. That's not bad. Yeah, that's not a bad a bad idea either. So I honestly kind of think this may be the best move. The same thing applies here as applied in the last game. If his king is stuck in the center, we should be thinking about how do we rip this open. So if we play this and he plays here, we could just come back. That's fine. And then after that, he's got nothing. And then you can take and start putting pressure on all of this. That's what I'm thinking. Okay. I like so it. I think that here, I would probably just go ahead and start trying to rip this open. <clears throat> so now what? Let's see. About this. We just keep pushing the pawn. Well, you don't want to lock it. You don't want to lock the center. <clears throat> you want to. You want to open lines. You want to open lines toward that king. So how could you start opening the center? Oh, I guess we could just take this pawn. But then I suppose yeah. that's a free pawn for him. I guess that's the thing that feels unnatural is just capturing his pawn. Feels unnatural because he can just take with his king. But I guess that makes he more sense than dancing the queen around. Well, he, he does get to take with the king. That's true. However, there's an important detail here is the king ends up on d4. So if your king is literally leading the fight, you're, you're not doing so great. So if you take and he goes here, you can bring your rook in. And, and now it starts to get scary here for this guy, right? So this is, this is the move. This is the move. Start opening things up. So <clears throat> how else could you start applying pressure to the to the king here? Uh, imagine with the queen on b6. I mean that'll put him in check. Yeah, so let's so let's let's start taking some stock here of, of the situation. So the king does not have this square. He does not have this square. <clears throat> he doesn't have this square or this square. Or this square. So he's starting to run out of territory here. We're, we're, we're running out of real estate. So how could we best get the king involved to, uh, to make some threats here? How could we best get the queen in to, to attack? Well, you, got, probably you, got this move. you got this move and you got this move. Which one do you think is better? Probably d6. Yeah, that would d6. be my vote. Or sorry, F6. So F6, and he plays this. So what do you what do you do there? Uh, oh, yeah. I guess we're blocked there, huh? Because then our queen has no other square to attack his king in that <laughs> position. Yeah. So so this move makes a little more sense because. It takes this square away from him. He can't get in the way to block, and that forces him even further into enemy territory. So this is this is the move. And then we can move our bishop That's over to C3. So so now let's let's count again and have a look. So he doesn't have this square. He doesn't have this square. He doesn't have this square, this square, this square, this square, or that square, or that square. So he's literally uh, one move from being checkmated. Uh, what so any at six any any check is 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 a win here. So <clears throat> except except this check because that gives him that square. Mate. So yeah, so you got mate and one or mate and one. So when you have when you have checkmate with a pawn, you have to play it. It's in the rules. It's in the rules. <laughs> so wow. anyway, but Amazing. you see, you see though, 
Well, you see, though, the ideas are, you know, just you see how powerful it is when your your pieces are in the game. And that's what I was telling you before we started the video is, you know, when you play the cow, you're spending a lot of time getting your your knights to to less than ideal places. Right. And whereas if you just get them out, get them in the game and you do it as fast as you can and you don't waste time. Look at look at this. Look at how this game flows. So, again, nothing there's we're not we're, we're playing literally the same opening that we just played literally the same thing same exact deal our pieces are in the game right so now let's look at the position now we're we're we're, we're castle well not yet but he does this and this is really where the wheels fall off but if you if you look at the position now we have two bishops in the game the king steps up so you know it's 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 not looking good we get castled so now our king, safe as he could be, there's no attack, there's no pieces down here threatening us or anything like that. So now all of our pieces are now playing, right? The rooks are playing, they're they're active, the the queen is ready to go. And now it's just about trying to open up some lines to get to this guy. And so he steps over. They they thought that was the best move too, but whatever. That's an accurate. And now you open, you start opening up lines and you see how quick this falls apart for our buddy here it's just lost and again he didn't get his pieces out and look at your pieces everything's connected and ready to play in the game so that's what i was trying to say earlier about you know you're you're spending time in that cow opening getting you know to squares that that you know aren't helping you you know yeah. so uh, you can play that Tyler one played it. He's rated higher than I am. But if, you know, if, if for what my opinion's worth, I would I would stick with, you know, something a little more basic. You can play, like I said, you can play the London as white or black almost against anything that they do with uh if you're playing it as white, they can play the Anglin Gambit, which kind of throws you off a little bit. But you know, black, obviously you can't play it against E4. Uh, but I mean, if they play D4, you could you, you just play the London, you know, just play exactly what we played and it's fine. But that's that's the deal. And it also, you know where your pieces belong. And they have a home, they have a specific place that they go. So it, it reduces the opportunity for you to blunder your pieces. Yeah. So yeah, it's it's you know, yeah, it's it's a good opening. So yeah. Anyway, did you do you feel like you learned anything from this? Was this helpful, you think? Yeah, I definitely I definitely learned that um I'm gonna take the cow. I'm gonna cut cut it in two, hang it, and dry it after this. So. That ain't a bad. That ain't a bad plan. <laughs> that ain't a bad plan. <laughs> so I'm again, it, you know, and, and, and it, it, you know, it it does work. You know, it works, and you know, you win games with it. That's fine. But you know, sticking with something a little more mainstream, you know, I think would would probably you know be more benefit for you. And this, you don't waste those extra couple of moves. Your knights are on better squares. And fighting for you know control of the center, which is what you want, and you can really play the London against pretty much anything. I mean, mm. you know, even the England Gambit, you know, you could really just decline the Gambit and still play the London. So, sure. yeah, I mean, you know, however you want to do it. But anyway, I'll yeah, end the video. Cool. I'll end mine. If you want to do yours, and we'll we can wrap up. You know, after we quit recording, sound good? Yeah, totally. Yeah, no, this is really good. A lot of the um, a lot of the moves like. If I were just to look at them and see them, they would feel unnatural, especially like some of the like pawn like sacrifices in the center and stuff. But as you explain it, it makes a lot of sense. But I think just for someone like me who's pretty new, um, like it'd be hard for me to like spot those moves like immediately, even though they seem like the those uh like pawn sacrifices like really like shift the tide of the game, even if they seem really subtle. So um yeah, that's cool. I'll definitely have to start like thinking about that more and looking at that more because uh, I can see how it is like sort of powerful and like. Yeah. Yeah. When the King gets into the center, you want to open it up. And that's what I was saying. You know, even if it means sacrificing now, if you're going to sacrifice a piece, you better, you better have something concrete. You can get away with losing a knight, or I'm sorry, with losing a pawn. If the King is weak and he's out in the center of the board, losing a pawn, whatever it is what it's fine if you if you're going to start losing pieces you better have something so you know but opening the board up 
when you see the king start, you know, when he starts coming down here, yeah, start ripping it open. Start just, you know, if he's if he's got pawns around, you know, try to open, you know, push pawns, open stuff up, you know, and just try to get to him. Yeah, that's that's the deal. And you see, you know, once once the king ended up out here, he was two squares from home. So it's not even like he was over here. He was two squares away. And immediately it was like, okay, we have to we have to start opening the board. The board has to open up because once it does, now you're swarming them. You know, it's yeah, and it's sense. it's bad news bears. So, yeah, totally. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Awesome. All right. So we'll end oh, yeah. the video and then and yeah, I appreciate we it. Wrap bro. Up this together. has been uh, all right. This has been like super useful. All right, man. Well, good. I hope you take something away from it. And I hope it helps you get some wins. I'm gonna go ahead and end my video, and then me and you can wrap up. Okay. All right. Well, if you guys like that. Like, comment, subscribe, all the things, and I'll see you all in the next video. See you guys.